Give me fuel, give me fire, give me double shot and die! It's one of the most magnificent sights in sports, the tiny half-mile Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Tonight, 150,000 fans form a wall of color around this concrete. Throughout the years, fans flock to their favorite track across the country. There's tradition at Daytona and Darlington, the lore of Indy, the sparkle of California and the sizzle of Vegas. There's Charlotte, Phoenix, Richmond and The Rock and the rest. Go to those tracks and you get to see one of 36 great races. Come to this track, and you get to see 36 races all in one. It's the Sharpie 500 here at Bristol Motor Speedway in prime time. Now, let's go trackside with MRN for the command and the starting lineup. Guys, there is the starting lineup for the Sharpie 500 here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Kyle Petty and Ricky Rudd are on the front row. Here we go. Green flag is in the air. We're underway. Got a big jump. 
on the start there, but it's not going to be enough. As you notice, we've qualified last. There is a reason for that. Our corner speed is absolutely terrible. You're going to see us get a corner speed from, from around 95 miles per hour to 105. And we need our corner speed to at least, at minimum, be 110. And because we can't get a good corner speed, we can't get good, we can't get maximum straightaway speed. So that's where we're, we're just, we're, that's where we're going to get killed during this race. We just, we just don't have that corner speed. Luckily for us, the good news is our, oh man, big stack up there. I got hard into Shane Hall. That's not good for us. As we sustain some pretty significant damage to the front, uh, the right front, which unfortunately is going to slow us down even more. But the good news is, before all of that uh, happened, the good news is, tire wear uh, times tire wear times two should be done. So we should be able to get ourselves a new chassis and be a little bit more competitive. The next thing I believe we should work on is downforce. To get us, we need, we need that handling. We need the corner speed. Because we don't have the corner speed, we, we, we just we can't be competitive. You see, like, we can't, we can't get to the corners fast enough. And because of that, we scrub off speed on the straightaway. So we should be able to get up to like 130, 140 almost on the straights. But because we can't get that corner speed, we just don't have, we, we're not going to have the straightaway speed, obviously. No matter how much acceleration I put into the car, it's just not going to, it's not going to physically happen. Not without me blowing up the engine. Ooh, contact with the wall there. <laughs> Got a little bit tight coming off that turn. That was just me trying to do too much. I was trying to push the car too much. Work a little harder. That lap was sort of slow. Now on the plus side, we're not as slow as we were. Um, I have noticed improvements from last uh, last season. We were running about we're running about 16 second laps. You know, 16 uh, 16 four is our best. But we're within a couple of tenths, usually, of the 16s. Um, I think our first season, we were, like, running 18-second laps. <laughs> we were really, really slow, really off the pace. I mean, going, like, two, three laps down. And, yeah, we're going to go laps down here. But, like I said, the main, the main issue here is not our engine power. We have the power. We just don't have the handling. And this is similar to what I was saying last week. Like, we have the power, we just don't have the, the handling. The corner speed is killing us. You see Kyle Petty is now out front. We're going to do our best to try to just protect the bottom, not let these guys get under us too much. Uh, or, you know, Kyle Petty could just drive down the apron and drive around us. That could, that could happen as well. <laughs> So here's another problem. You see like how we push up the track? We gotta keep Carvick behind us. You see how we kinda push up the track a little bit in traffic? That's what downforce is gonna help with. So if we get that downforce, uh, get that downforce working a little bit better for us. It should be soon, like Kevin Harvick was down the apron. He thought about dive bombing it, but yeah. See, we're running around 95. Try to get off the. We're holding them off, holding them up pretty good. So if we started a little bit higher, we probably could hold off, you know, hold off some positions, you know, fight to keep some positions. We could probably block a little bit and try to maintain and not lose too much. But because we just didn't qualify well. You know, we're like a second off the pace. And if you notice, most of like the uh, the qualifying times, most of them, maybe 90% of them, were in like the 15 second range. Even if they were high 15s. 
boy. Had a little bit of trouble getting the car gathered up there. It's like I pushed up, got tight, got into Kevin Harvick. And I was trying to get off of him, so I was turning hard left. And then when, the, when it finally caught, I was really loose. I was fishtailing going into the turn that time. Jimmy Johnson went running one of his alternate paint schemes. I believe that's that looked like his Looney Tunes paint scheme. I wasn't not sure. Look back at the beginning of the video for that. Pushed up the track a little bit there. That allowed Michael Waltrip to get by us. We're the only car one lap down right as of right now. But that will change shortly. Pit stops coming. Pit stops are happening already. Got a few dar a few dars. A few cars coming down pit road. Michael Waltrip's now coming down pit road. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of a uh, a tip that I learned from What If Racing. And if you don't know if you don't know What If Racing, I'm pretty sure you do, but if you don't, he also does he does racing let's plays. His his channel is mainly racing though. Whereas ours is to, is just on Sundays. Um and that's pit earlier. I usually come down pit road later because I'm waiting for a caution to possibly come out. But I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna pit around halfway. Golly, we're tight. It was like that car wasn't even trying to turn. It was just headed straight for the wall. And we gotta get. Unfortunately, we have to get four tires here. Yeah, we definitely gotta get four tires here. So we're coming down pit road this time by. We gotta get four tires. There's no way around it. We just have to get four tires. Uh, go ahead and take a half round of wedge out while we're at it. Try to get that damage fixed on the right on the right front. And that's the damage from earlier in the race, plus the you know our hitting the wall a couple of times, but. Alright, 17-4 on the pit stop. That's not bad, but you see, what if always pits early? Um, and what I have noticed is that he loses less spots when he does that. And like because the tire wear is so so extreme, you just I just lose spots. You know, like so I, I lose time as the more I stay out. So and it's it's truthfully that remember how I was saying like it's it seems a little bit weird like that we lose that many spots there is a kind of like it is unnatural to lose that many spots even if like I go down and take two tires I still lose at least 10 to 15 spots on the track oh boy <laughs> uh, contact with Ron Hornaday Ron Hornaday battling for rookie of the year I got to show you that later on but um, it's it's very unnatural how fast you lose time on the track. Oh boy, contact with Ward Burton. <laughs> Try to muscle him back down. <laughs> I'm trying not to go more than one lap down. I don't want to do that. I'm two laps down right now, but that's because the uh, I haven't got my second lap. My I haven't gotten the second lap back yet. I should hear shortly. Leaders, lead cars are coming to yeah, Leader came down pit road this time by. He stayed out for quite some time, but yeah, like, you lose way too much time. Contact behind us with the number four car. No caution. Everyone keeps it going, but yeah, it was a big wreck behind us. That stacked up the field quite a bit. It was Matt Kenseth. Boy, Matt Kenseth down on the apron. He gets loose. Yeah, there's one thing you can't really do. You can't get down on the apron and get into somebody. You'll just spin yourself out. But as I was saying, before all of that madness happened, um, you lose an unbelievable, unbelievable amount of time the more you stay out on worn tires because your tires can actually slow you down more than 
you know, 10, 15 miles per hour all of a sudden. And it just, it's just remarkable. And, and very unrealistic, but it's, it's crazy, yeah. He, freaking Matt Kenseth, man. <laughs> That's alright, we'll remember that for future races to come. Try to give Ryan Newman some room here. But, yeah, you lose so much time. It's ridiculous how much time you lose is if you try to stay out on worn tires. So, um, taking a tip from him, coming down pit road early. And, or at least halfway, right at, right around halfway. If caution, if a caution comes out, I'll just have to deal with it. Um, just how I have to hope a caution comes out before I pit, basically. But from now on, for the rest of the LP, I'll just be getting coming down pit road, um, close to halfway, maybe a little bit before. Because what could happen is I could actually make some time up. Make contact with it looks like Bill Elliott there. Can tell if, I can't tell if that's Bill Elliott or Jeremy Mayfield half the time because they drive the exact same car and the nine looks the same. And usually by the time I see them, all I see is the nine, so I can't tell which one is which. But um, is 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 that Terry Labonte again, or is that a rookie? No, that's a that's another rookie. He's running an Aaron's car. Terry Labonte doesn't have a Aaron's car. Oh man. Contact with, big contact with uh, Ricky Craven there. It's like Ricky Craven got into the wall a little bit. Got into our right rear, that turned us into the wall. We're gonna suffer some damage because of that. Nobody's fault, just, I said, there's not a lot of room here and there's a lot of hard racing that goes on. But as I said, from the, for the rest of the LP, I'll just be hitting halfway or less. Because I know I have the efficiency and uh, I, I have the durability enough to make it, you know, a good, a good while. Uh, a, a lot of laps on fuel. I have really good fuel mileage. So even if I pit before halfway, I know I can make it. So we're racing really, really hard here. Like I said, if we were a little bit higher up, we can defend these positions. Even if we have to like do some rubbing and beating and banging, we can still defend positions. And we're just getting killed on the corner speed. Oh boy, Casey Kane tried to take a swipe at us. And that's the thing, as long as I keep them down on the apron, if they do that, they, they wind up spinning themselves out. Of course, you know, they get me at the right angle. They can actually, like Kenseth did, they can get me up the racetrack. Unfortunately, he almost wrecked me because of that, but that's fine. I think Kenny Schrader got into the wall there. He drops in line behind Casey Kane. So you gotta be a little bit more cautious here now. Yeah, we just don't have that... I want so bad to have the corner speed because I really, really like Bristol. This was the first track I won at on this game. White flag is out, one to go for the leader. We're low on fuel, but that's fine. We just have to make it to the finish. Trying to keep trying to keep these guys behind us. I don't want the leader to catch us. Okay, now the leader can catch us and it's fine. Someone has just won this race, and unfortunately, we're going to come home a disappointing last place. We're coming off turn four. Oh, that was painful. Good grief. The race came down to the wire with a very close finish. Wow, you know, you're right. That was an incredible finish to an even more incredible race. This NASCAR Winston Cup Series is so exciting to watch. The 83 car would like to have finished a lot better, I'm sure. I hate it for those guys, too. They were so positive about their chances to win this morning, but then they just had a bad race. It happens. We're out of time tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Have a great night. 
Not sure what he meant about positive about our chances to win, but yeah, let's just go ahead and give you the race results there. Uh, this was a painful race, but anyway. Uh, Ricky Rudd is your race winner. He wins the Sharpie 500 here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Rick Kevin Harvick comes in second. Bobby Labonte in third. Dale Jarrett comes in fourth. Fifth is Michael Waltrip. Sixth is Scott Wimmer. Seventh is Jeff Gordon. Eighth is Johnny Benson. Ninth is Kurt Busch. And rounding out the top ten is Terry Labonte. So here are the rest of the race results. Dale Earnhardt Jr. finishes 11, so he loses some points to Dale Jarrett in the uh, in the points battle, but I'm not sure how many he'll lose there. Uh, Ron Hornaday, Rookie of the Year, finishes 19th. And uh, Winner's Prize, 189K, 114 uh, points. Uh, minutes 12 seconds time of race uh, average speed of 113 miles per hour thereabouts and a margin of victory uh, 0.16 seconds uh, with six lead changes throughout everything and there we are bringing up the rear in last place yeah all right guys so here are the point standings as you can see uh, we are still in the 22nd spot um, Johnny Benson's pretty much got 21st locked up. Unfortunately, we couldn't maintain the top 20 in points. Michael Mulcher moves himself into the top 20. Jimmy Spencer solidifies himself. Well, not really, because... I mean, he solidifies himself in the top 20, but Michael Waltrip's not that far behind him. Let's go ahead and give you the points. Standings from the up top. Dale Jarrett has now inherited the points lead after his top five finish at Bristol. Today, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. falls to second. He is now seven points behind, so this is a close battle between those two. Uh, Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin round out the top four. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the awards for the week. Uh, pole runner, pole award goes to Kyle Petty. He also led the most laps of the race. Does surprise me. In this particular game, he does tend to run well at the short tracks. Uh, especially Bristol. Jeff Green moved up the most spots of the race. Jeff Gordon had the fastest lap of the race. Ron Hornaday was the rookie of the race. And the move of the race, most time pass, goes to Jeff Gordon. And actually, let's look at the rookie of the year standings. Ron Hornaday is running away with this rookie of the year. He's pretty much got it locked up. He's pretty much got it locked up. Uh, you have... Um, uh, Jeff Rivers, Jay Moore, uh, uh, Andrew Hicks, I think that's Todd Sullivan, uh, Scott Brewer. Uh, I don't know who this driver is. Uh, BJ Vaught, uh, Carl Spicer, uh, Kevin Patterson, Jay Killen, uh, Donnie Clark, Mark Jacobs, uh, JG Williams, Alexander Clark, and Donnie Wolf, and Mike Brown. Uh, Donnie, I think that's Donnie Nichols. Oh, yeah, it's Donnie Nichols and Donnie Wolf, I believe. And Alexander Smith. All right, where's got a lot of rookies racing <laughs> this particular year. So that's kind of interesting. A lot of, a lot of them, Mike Misiak, but a lot of rookies racing this season. So, but I, yeah, Ron Hornaday's got it completely locked up. Um, poll awards. I'm actually leading in polls. For, <laughs> which is ironic. Uh, we have, we're actually leading in polls. I believe like they've come from they definitely came from Daytona and Talladega, but there was the one poll at um, uh, what was it Pocono. So that was odd. I didn't expect to get a poll at Pocono. Of course, unfortunately, due to some unknown reason, here's a noble five. No one won at Daytona. No top fives at, because we definitely didn't, didn't get a top five at Lowe's. But, um, yeah, Noble 5, no, so the top 5 for this, um, uh, for this race will go into Richmond for $1 million bonus, and the top 5 of Richmond will go into Talladega. So, we are the Noble 5 contender for Richmond. Um, hopefully we can get something good there, maybe they get us a little, get us a little bonus money that time around, Chevy leads the most laps, but Ford's not that far behind. And lap champions, I saw this earlier, we're actually fourth <laughs> in terms of lap champions. We've led quite a few laps this season, but as usual, Jeff Gordon is the man to beat in terms of laps led. So, uh, which makes it funny, like, he surprised he's not farther up in the points. But, you know, like I said, you gotta, gotta have those good finishes, and those help out a lot. So, yeah, um, good news, um, we do have tire wear uh, times two now. So, 
hopefully we get some better uh, better corner speed from that. I believe the next one we're going to go for is downforce. And that will hopefully get us some better corner speed as well because corner speed killed us here, as you can see. And I said it uh, earlier on in the race, corner speed was going to kill us here. This that dirt, Bristol is a track you need the corner speed, you need the handling. And I didn't have it. So we're going to get that. So next Bristol, we don't suffer like that. Um, Darlington, speed handling is kind of hand in hand. Uh, we have the speed and we have corner entry or corner speed in turn four i believe but turn one not so much so darlington should be interesting we do tend to finish well there so that should be an interesting race uh we'll try to figure out a uh throwback scheme that i can kind of make for darlington uh but obviously either you're very limited in this game to what you can do so um yeah I figured it was going to be one of those races where I pulled up the rear and that's what happened. Um, there's not much I could do there. Not much I could do. So I just need the handling. I need, I need to upgrade the handling of the car. I was too focused on speed. That's my fault. I was too focused on speed earlier on and to, instead of should have been focusing more on handling uh, or equally on handling. So now I'm trying to play catch up. So, uh, But yeah, th we're, there's always next season and we can we can go from there. And we still have Darlington next week. Like I said, we do really well there. That's what I'm hoping for. We get some good, get a good finish there. And, uh, oh, sorry, not next weekend. Next weekend is off. So the weekend after next will be Darlington. So it should be fun. should be fun. should be a good race. Um, hoping for a good, uh, at least top 20 finish there. I think we can manage that. I think that's what we did last time. So I think we can manage a good top 20 there again. But yeah, guys, um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the support. Definitely need it after races when we have races like this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> this is all I can really say about it. Just, it's just one of those days. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. One of these races, I do them every Sunday following NASCAR weekend. No race next weekend, so the race will be the following weekend in September. And I will see you at Darlington. <laughs>